it's you. It's so nice to see you again. Feeling lonely? Well, I'll keep you company. Come on, let's boot up a little game called The Seventh Guest. I'm sure it'll put you in better spirits. <laughs> Ah, uh, The Seventh Guest. Now this is a title truly worth bringing back into the limelight simply due to how unique it was for the time. Developed in 1993 by Trilobite, The Seventh Guest was one of the first CD-ROM games with live-action video clips and is considered one of the main proponents of CD-ROM purchases. I mean, imagine you're a kid and you're on your computer playing Math Blaster and you see an ad for this. The last dream of a great house, a mansion of the wealthy toy maker was to build. A strange house. Oh, but you can't play it. You don't have a CD-ROM drive. Gotta get one. Bam! Sales. It was also the first graphic adventure game to use 640x320 graphics with 256 colors. And though we take these things for granted now, fitting the game on just two CDs was insanely impressive. Even Bill Gates referred to it as, quote, the new standard in interactive entertainment. And why would you ever distrust Bill Gates? No doubt about it, this game was a huge technical achievement and still looks pretty amazing upon replaying it. It also has one of the best video game soundtracks I've ever listened to, written by George the Fat Man. Sanger. I mean bongos! I love bongos! So if the seventh guest has all of these amazing things, then why don't I like it? Well, let me give you the rundown on the plot. Game takes place in 1935 and revolves around this nomad, or vagabond, call him what you want, named Henry Stoff. He randomly kills a woman for her purse, well, I think he's killing her there, and basically lives his life as a man going crackers. One night he dreams of a weird doll and decides to create it. He trades this weird ass looking abomination of a toy with a bartender for room and board, creates more dolls, makes more transactions, and suddenly finds success as a toy maker. Isn't it great when serial killers can find success and a new life in the children's toy industry? America! Only one problem here, the children who are given these dolls are dying, bad press. In a final dream, he sees a strange house, a huge mansion with tricks and puzzles meant to scare people. Sometime later, six guests are invited to stay at the mansion, and all of these guests have specific desires. For example, one dreams of eternal youth. Once, I had beautiful hair. Once, I was young. And another wants to be the best magician in the land. All selfish desires, really. It reminds me a lot of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, only I'm not drooling over scrum diddlyumptious bars. The guests are told that if they can solve the puzzles around the mansion, all of their wishes will come true. And that doesn't sound shady at all. Now conceptually, I adore this game. It's a conglomeration of all these things I really love. The setting reminds me a little bit of the 1985 movie Clue, also set in a huge mansion, and the characters are also reminiscent of that. I also get some Agatha Christie vibes as you learn the characters' stories and their willingness to turn on each other so that they can get what they want. Similar to the characters fighting over the will in the Colonel's Bequest, which, yep, also based on Agatha Christie. I love the music, I think the visuals are gorgeous, and hell, even the FMV clips aren't too bad. And, and what is that? Just, I've been a stage magician all my life. I want to know, is there real magic? Does Stoff know that? Can Stoff give that to me? I mean, they don't look bad, at least. I like how they decided to make these characters appear as ghosts to hide any possible artifacting from the blue screen. Crafty. I can't really say the same for the acting. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can do better or at least replicate some of this melodrama. Mr. I'm sorry! I just came here! They did! The king? You... You're the one! I'm gonna leave, Mr. Don't! Don't run away! Please! Don't run away! Don't go! Don't go! No! Don't go! No! No! Don't go! Don't go! Ah. These ghostly images here give the mansion a lot of eerie ambience, though it gets tiring and less scary the more you see them, and I like the bizarre little scenes you can find while clicking around your settings.
Okay, before I move on, I need to point this out. I know this is unrelated, but look at this phone. It looks like a little creature with arms and buggy eyes and stuff. Look at it! Can't unsee it now, can you? All right, back to the review. <laughs> the cutscenes unveil more story as you go, and it really did have me intrigued. I mean, look at this! Oh my god, what does it mean? So then what's the problem? Logic puzzles. Logic puzzles everywhere. Now this makes sense because the entire story is about these wacky characters trying to solve the puzzles Stoff created, so it only makes sense that you, the player and narrator, are also trying to figure them out. In fact, maybe you are the seventh guest. Eh? Bet you didn't see that one coming. I'm so perceptive. But I hate these damned logic puzzles. When I was a kid, I didn't even want to do jigsaw puzzles. Screw that shit. I don't care if it's a picture of an adorable golden retriever. I'd rather go back to the Roberta Williams moon logic puzzles where I have to put moldy cheese into a wand generator. Ugh. Basically, I think these puzzles, ranging from easy to Chinese water torture, please help, are cumbersome and really break the flow of the cutscenes and exploration. See this one? Fuck this one, I hate it. I would much rather have this game comprise of inventory object puzzles that don't blatantly break the mood. Now some people really like these kind of puzzles. Hey, that's cool, man. They aren't necessarily bad and they're pretty challenging. I just don't think they fit. And even though I love the music in this game, I had to mute it when I was trying to figure these out. Also, sometimes Stoff interrupts you because he's a dick. Oh, I'm getting bored. Seriously, shut up. I'm trying to... I'm trying to do something here. Feeling lonely. Hey, I'm not lonely. I'm perfectly fine. Just because I'm sitting here alone in the dark trying to figure out logic puzzles at 1 a.m. with a box of s'mores Pop-Tarts doesn't mean I'm lonely. Not lonely. Some puzzles don't have a direct solution, so basically a walkthrough where cheats can only do so much. Like the notorious microscope puzzle, which is just a game of attacks where the AI is so bloody smart, I honestly couldn't get past it this time. I had beaten this in the past, but it was definitely just luck. I am absolutely terrible at games like this, and depending on what the AI does, it can take a while. The AI never seems to make a mistake, so you basically have to play perfectly. Another frustrating element is the slow-moving animations. Anytime you go somewhere, the camera has to take its time panning to the next location. This is cool when you first boot up the game because it's all new and you want to see all the beautifully rendered rooms and it's all creepy and awesome, but after playing it for hours and hours and hours, I, don't care I just want to skip all these scenes and get to the room I need to get to. There are some secret passages, but they've hindered me more than helped me because I've accidentally clicked on them and ended up at the completely wrong end of the house and they only work one way. And don't even ask me how you're able to go down the sink's drain. I mean, come on, narrator. You aren't even slightly curious as to how you were able to do that? Even though I'm very intrigued by the story, it does get a little... busy. I mean, what happened to the aforementioned dying girls and the dolls? How does that tie into the six guests and the puzzles? And why does Stoff even care? I guess he's just evil. And evil doesn't need a reason? Sometimes it feels like there are multiple stories being told here, and I personally find it a little confusing, but I do like trying to follow it, and I like learning about Stoff and the other characters. I wish I knew more about them, actually. Though I have not tried it myself yet, I've been told by a reliable source that the Android version of this game is a lot nicer. It offers a map and access to the rooms, newer icons, and the puzzles are a little bit easier. Overall, it looks like a pretty decent update of the original game. So yeah, I'm pretty torn with this title. I'm legitimately interested in the story and the characters, and I want to know more about them, and more about the mansion, and stuff, and the evil within, but I don't actually want to play the game, because I don't like logic puzzles. So I basically have an interesting game that I'd rather not play. It's still pretty cool though, and worth looking at, just because it was so innovative for the time. Just don't come running to me when you get sick and tired of seeing blue and green boogers fight each other. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my review of The Seventh Guest. If you want to see another spooky game review, I recently talked about Phantasmagoria, and I have it linked in the annotations. If you want to contact me, you can do so in the form of 140 characters on Twitter, or if you require more characters than that, there's always Facebook or Patreon, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.